to Her Majesty the Queen on her 95th birthday. A heart might ache for what it can't return, to one whose boundless alms are truly spent. Elizabeth, yet did we ever earn thy myriad gifts or ponder what they meant? For even now thou pourest forth thy life into the weaving of the nation's cloth and social fabric. Yea, for all the strife of these our times, we've never seen thee wroth. Unto the humblest waif thy sceptred hand, that Philip held and kissed its warmth extends, no differently than to the great and grand, though to thy God alone thy figure bends. Wherefore, fair queen, I tune the golden strings of England's antique lute to chant thy praise, and send thee blessings on sweet music's wings, O thou most worthy of a poet's lays. Britannia lacks a voice to vent her heart, no bard with tuneful lyre thy jests records, and England's poesy has lost its art. A poem sans rhyme is but a harp sans chords, and though our balladry no longer gleans from time's rich fields thy virtue's beaming rays, Dame history comes laden with the scenes of all the passages of all thy days. The fourth month's princess, June's bright queen, to thee the lilac and the lily bow, as once incarnate valour too was seen to kneel before thee making solemn vow. Two centuries process in measured pace, in each art thou enthroned, in heart and mind. Nor wars nor fires diminish thy good grace. In thee fresh charms shall future rages find. Though some should fail in faith and some in trust, the shallow make their noise, the false betray. The world and we must all return to dust before love's victory on that last day. For now the people suffer all thy woes, but part thy joys in merriment and mirth. From these my verses take the common rose we offer thee this day of thy glad birth.